Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Wednesday, October 26th, 2022. And tonight is another paranormal book re review. Excuse me. Um, and uh, I'll be going over uh, some stories, some more stories from H.P. Lovecraft, The Complete Fiction. This is part 11 in this series, just to give you an idea of how many stories there are. As always, you can find all the shows, along with links to social media, ways to no donate, and ways to contact me, at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O, paranormal.podbean.com. Again, that's where you can find all the episodes and links. Uh, always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions, or topic suggestions, or if you have stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own, or from others that you trust, happy to either read those, or have you join me on the show to talk about them. And, um, I have seven stories to talk about tonight. Um, they're all fairly short, a few of them are really short. There will be spoilers, but as always with these reviews, um, there's always a lot more detail in the story than I'm able to put in one of these uh, these, summa these summaries, these uh, these uh, brief descriptions of these stories. So definitely recommend checking them out. Um, I'm sure the ebook of this audiobook that I got is probably is probably fairly cheap as well. Um, I got the audiobook. 40 almost 48 hours of of content um for five bucks on uh on google play on their store so um i definitely recommend looking into even just the audio or the um the even the ebook i would guess would be fairly cheap overall so um like i said there's seven stories that i have planned to review tonight and uh, there'll probably, probably be another, I don't know, three to five parts in this whole series uh, before I finish reviewing this book. That's how big it is. So, because um, some stories are are only five to ten minutes, others are half hour or more, and then some are a few hours. So, and um, I think that takes care of everything. And uh, at least for now. Tomorrow I'll go go over um, plans for the weekend as far as shows go. So I think we can leave that for then. So this first story is um, called Hypnos. And uh, a lot of um, Lovecraft stories are um, taken from the point of view of one character who is sort of narrating or describing everything that happens. And this is, um, in this story, uh, it does a similar thing. Um, talking, it's basically a, a man talking about his experiences living in Kent and then L London, England. And he, um, he meets, uh, he's a sculptor, and he meets a, a, a uh, strange man, another man, strange man in, in, in the, in a railway station, and um, basically, his the stranger's eyes seem to be almost glowing, according to the to the narrator, and they become friends. Um, and apparently, this this narrator has never been good at making friends, and so um, this uh, this figure, this other man was uh, so interesting apparently to the sculptor that the sculptor uh, decided to make him a subject of, of of a piece of art and um so and then when he wasn't working on the sculpt the, the sculpture they were um they basically were deep into meditation uh trance trances um dreams and um and so, 
there's they do this as often as they can. Basically, they sit around and have, um, I guess, in a way, you could say, visions of the uh, the uh, uh, other realms. Um, and of course, they do this um, partially through uh, drugs that they don't specify. Um, and so the uh, so these two do this and. Uh, they manage somehow to, just through their minds, using their minds, they uh, go into this um, other realm that is beyond human sensation, it says. And they pass through several barriers, and um, eventually, though, one, the, the narrator comes to one that he can't go past, but the, the, the stranger, this, um, this friend, does. and. Um, so the uh the sculptor wakes up from this journey and uh and waits for his friend to come back um and uh apparently he does after a while but when he does the stranger says that um they have to avoid sleep at all cost due to I'm guessing what the stranger experienced in that other realm that he was able to access um so through the use of more drugs this is really a story there that, that's pretty prevalent um they do manage to to um avoid sleep a lot but they do sleep eventually of course and every time they do they both seem to age rapidly and they have terrible nightmares that the narrator re doesn't even want to go into. And apparently one night, uh, the stranger, this um, sculptor's friend, went into a uh, strange sleep that he could not, uh, the narrator could not wake him up from. And um, the narrator basically freaks out from this. And uh, passes out. And when he wakes up, he's surrounded by police and neighbors uh, who explain to him that this friend, uh, the stranger, was not real. And the only thing that is left uh, is that this sculpture of um, a bust of the, the, the stranger, this friend. And, um, and of course, the, in, in the sculpture, doesn't say who did it, I don't think, but there's, um, there's a, a word in there that is from, is a Greek word, but it basically translates to hypnos. And, um, that's how that story ends. It's really done really well. Um, and of course, there's a lot of, Lovecast stories are, and um, so it was really amazing just to think that maybe just want to wonder what was what was this um this narrator going through to have this experience was the was this um narrator's friend real in any way? Um, it's hard to say. So, and you hear that people have experiences with other people that they talk with and and maybe even have physical contact with and then these people just vanish and it turns out no one else has ever seen them so um again that's a big part of these reviews is looking into fictional stories that also seem to have counterparts at least to some degree in the real world So, um, so neat story there, and, uh, that's the first one I wanted to cover for tonight. So, this next one here is, the title is In the Vault, and, uh, let me see here. Let me get out of this pop-up, okay, there we go. Um, so the story talks about 
uh, let's see here. The this um narrator. Oh, this was a good one, creepy one. So it starts off with this um this undertaker for a town, um, small town in, in New England, uh, the story known as Peck Valley. Uh, and this undertaker's name is George Birch. Um, and he, uh, while working in a, um, a mausoleum or a vault, he, um, the door somehow closes on its own. Uh, of course he assumes it's due to wind or any number of, um, of other factors. He doesn't really believe in anything paranormal. And, um, so he's trapped in this, in this vault with several coffins that I have in place there. Um, to, uh, for until the spring when they could be actually buried. And, um, so he figures out there's a space between the top of the, there's a space above the door. There's like a, um, a window, I guess, or an opening. And he figures he can maybe climb out of there, but it's, it's up a ways. It's, it's at the top of the door. And so what he does is he uses the various coffins with the body still in them that are stored there to make a kind of um, pile of these coffins that he can turn into like a, a set of steps. But, um, and so he does this, but he still can't quite reach the top. He can't quite reach the, um, the opening. And so he, in, in his attempt to do so, he, um, his weight and the, the state of the coffins, which apparently they were not the most um, well-made items. Um, and, of course, he was selling these to people. Um, he actually, his weight and the, the shifting of the pile lead him to um, break the lid of the top coffin and uh, which um badly injures him his ankles basically um and uh but he is able to eventually get out of that vault and um and then journey back to town and uh later there's a doctor um last name davis investigates the area of course they're they're able to get in everyone's able to get in from the outside. Also, um, Davis finds that that the um, excuse me, the door to the vault easily opens, so he's not sure why it would have closed and been stuck the way it was. But um, he finds that the top coffin was again not made so well. And, uh, the person that was buried inside there was notorious for being a, uh, basically not a very nice man. Um, and so, and also it's someone that Birch didn't like to begin with. And, um, so the, the original, the coffin originally had been built for someone else. Um, who was shorter. And so Davis figures out that um, in order to get this other man, Sawyer, into the, his, his remains into this coffin, Birch had done something terrible. Turns out he had cut Sawyer's feet off in order to fit the body into the coffin. And the, the wounds in Birch's ankles turn out to be um, teeth marks. So, somehow, um, we really don't know, it doesn't, story never is specific about, was this man alive in the coffin? Or was it some kind of paranormal thing where his ghost somehow, their spirit made, and still inhabited the body? And, um, 
basically took revenge on Birch for what he had done. Um, it's hard to say, but it does turn out that the the marks on Birch's ankles are teeth marks. So uh, you could say um, classic kind of a horror story where you really don't know for sure whatever happened, except that Birch was lucky to get out of there. And um, so neat story there as well. So let's see here. That covers that. And I can move on to the next one here. So as you see, some of these are easier to um and quicker to review than others. So that's why I have so many tonight. And um, so let's see here. This next one, the title is Memory. And um, let's see here. Okay. So this story um takes place in an ancient valley known as Nis, N-I-S. And um, there are stone ruins described by the Lovecraft in the story. There doesn't seem to be like a separate narrator, so it's just someone and or Lovecraft. Um, and in this valley, there are, there are these um, strange uh, small apes that live in this valley. And um, there is a river in the valley, and um, the there are these two kind of mythological figures that are um, are supernatural figures that are also part of the story. And one is known as the genie that haunts the moonbeams, and the other is the daemon of the valley. And the genie asks the daemon who it was that placed the stones that were that made up the ruins near the river. Uh, and then the daemon replies that, uh, says that um, she remembers the name of the creatures clearly, but only because their name rhymed with that of the river, which is Than or Tan, I'm not sure. Um, Oh, okay, 10. And he says that they were called man. So, and he also remembers, the statement remembers that apparently they appeared similar to be the, uh, to similar to the small apes that are, that um, basically use the ruins as their home. And, um, and so the genie leaves the area um, and, uh, it's basically really just like a almost a conversation of of supernatural forces about this uh this site <clears throat> and I think the implications there in that story what I got from it anyway is that this is some kind of a future possibly where again man had once been there but wasn't any longer. And there, all that was left was the ruins and these apes um, that use them as their home. So, but apparently these apes are not the same as man. So, just um, sort of a neat conversation between two, you can almost say godlike or deity-like figures, mythical figures, that um, Lovecraft made up for this story. So some of these are really short. They're like only a, um, a few minutes long to listen to. So that's why I'm able to do so many tonight. So, and that story kind of fits the title of the story uh, of the, the title because it's memory. So, um, but it's also neat because it's kind of, even the memory of these supposedly powerful beings isn't super clear either after a time so um again these stories are much better than i'm able to just describe in these brief uh summaries so um let me see here now this next one <laughs> the title i'm going to try to say this um it's nyar nyarlathotep i believe 
N Y A R L A T H O T E P. And um, this is actually more of a poem, but it's like a it's kind of a mix between a poem and a story. So the story um, it starts by uh, this narrator who has um, this inexplicable sense of foreboding um in general and this is apparently no um felt by in the story anyway most of humanity uh, along with the narrator and um at the same time this uh figure appears in in Egypt and um seems to resemble resemble a pharaoh and he claims to have come back out of the, the darkness of uh, the blackness of 27 centuries. And he is said to be receiving messages from other worlds. And so he makes his way to the, to the West. And um, he seems to know a lot about science. And um, creates these um amazing devices in the west and becomes famous as he travels through the area um basically showing displaying his powers and his um his uh intellect by making all these things but wherever he, wherever he goes to wherever he's at at the time when he's traveling the people in the area have terrible nightmares and the narrator uh, experiences this when this pharaoh, possible pharaoh, um, gets there. And um, so this narrator, even when he sees what um, this possible pharaoh can do, um, he uh, he um, doesn't believe that these are really that um, amazing. These abilities or these, these this knowledge, this narrator doesn't think that all this is all that amazing, and so he, um, the narrator, somewhat confronts this, uh, this uh, possible pharaoh, and um, let's see here. So he's he's basically driven out of this uh, this hall where everything is happening. And um, let's see here. So I'm losing my spot here. Um, so, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I think I. So basically, in um, almost in revenge for this kind of um, this insult, uh, this possible pharaoh causes everything in the city to um, start to break down and everyone in the city goes into a trance-like state and wanders off and um, they go they break into three groups and um, so they all these people flee and go in three different different directions and um, they break these different groups can kind of have three different reactions to this trance one of one of them just gets um extremely sad they start moaning and they they flee the area all everyone flees the area um and then the second group basically goes mad and start laughing and the third group which the narrator is in leaves the city and heads for the country and they travel through this um into the country <clears throat> until they get um find this dark rift with the narrator um enters <clears throat> and so doesn't really explain exactly what happens in this rift except that they they all he and the, and the rest of the people that are with him um, they all have these visions of um, this other realm that is basically 
chaos and insanity, it says. Um, and it's in this other universe that is ruled by um, mindless, it says, mindless inhuman gods whose uh, messenger and soul, according to the story, is this possible and maybe even um, maybe even it is some kind of a pharaoh. So it's basically, it's a really neat story. <clears throat> um, definitely recommend reading it for all the the better better um, effect than what I'm able to give you all here. But um, really well done, of course. So uh, check that one out. And it, again, that one's, the title is this, this pharaoh's name, which is N-Y-A-R-L-A-T-H-O. T E P. So that was um I knew that was gonna be difficult to uh to say. So let's see here. We got three more stories to go through. And um and then that'll be it. So let's see here what the next one is. Okay, this one is amazing. This goes back to the idea of where do ideas come from. This story is called Pickman's Model. And um, this is a short story. So this um, this is about this painter, uh, whose name is Richard Pickman, who creates um, in his art, his, his visual art, he creates, um, it's almost like abstract horror kind of art. Maybe not even abstract. And... Um, but because of, of how graphic his work is, how how terrifying his images are, he um he basically gets kicked out of the the um Boston Art Club and just from the, the art community in general. And the narrator is a friend of Pickman's and tries to find him after Pickman vanishes. And he talks about um He's in the story that um, this narrator is talking to another artist about how he found Pikmin. And um, and Pikmin took, it, took the narrator on a tour of his gallery, which was hidden away in, in a um, basically decrepit building in another part of, part of town. Excuse me. And. Um, so as they go further into the the gallery and the narrator sees more images, the um, the rooms seem to even um, change in their just how they feel to the narrator <clears throat> and um, become more evil. And of course, the paintings seem to follow suit. And um, this last picture that the narrator sees is basically of a creature that has red eyes and is somewhat a mix between canine and human who is also basically consuming a regular human and um there's a noise from within the room and uh sends pikmin running out of the room with a gun turns out there was um there was a a rat that was um rats were in the building, so as uh, Pikmin leaves and is gone for a while, there appears to be um the, the narrator notices a piece of paper that's attached to the the painting and um and so he Pikmin walks back into the room and explains that there are rats and um somehow. The narrator, just because of everything going on, he had decided to grab the picture even without almost realizing it, or the the, the picture, the paper. And um, when he opened it up, <clears throat> it turned out to be a a, a picture, a photograph. And um, but it's not the picture of the the background of the painting, which is what the narrator expected. But it's actually a picture of this creature that had been um drawn in this in this painting or painted in this 
painting. And um, so it turns out that Pikmin wasn't just drawing things from his imagination, but um, b making these paintings based on creatures that he's seen somehow somewhere. So um, very neat and well done horror story. Makes you wonder about what people see and um, and then if they're artists, how many of the weird creatures that you see in, in people's drawings or paintings makes you wonder if they're maybe these people see them in, in some way or another, um, whether it's in dreams or, or in the real world somewhere. So, um, so yeah, and the story, of course, ends with the narrator eventually leaving the area and describing all this to another artist. So, let me just um, get some water real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Um, and okay, so this next story is actually a fragment of a story that was never finished. Excuse me, there are all kinds of problems tonight. Um, and uh, so yeah, this this story was never finished apparently by Lovecraft. Um, thought to have been written in nineteen thirty three, thirty three. <clears throat> and um so let's see here apparently in um 1933 lovecraft wrote in a letter that he was at a standstill in writing and um and he was a unable to finish that story so but this um in this story itself this fragment this uh it talks about um let's see here doesn't really go into a lot of detail there's not a lot in this section on this but uh this is a story about a um know, there's really not much here so maybe i will have to leave this it's really a um just a short part of a story I thought it was good, but maybe it was really short. So maybe this is something you all can look up and check out um, check out on your own, because I'm not seeing a lot here. Um, but uh, it's many, um, it does seem to be like more of a, uh, just a short piece that um, doesn't really have an ending. So I'm sorry about that. I thought there was more to it, but it's not looking like there is. Um, but it does appear to be people uh, since then have turned it into a story about um that is is related to um a that other story Nyarth Nyarlathotep in that this um this fragment is a story about someone being possessed by that um that pharaoh so i hadn't realized there wasn't that much here to cover so sorry about that that will happen from time to time especially with these um some of these stories where there's just not a lot there to cut to review um i'd have to probably go back and actually listen to the thing again to to know much about it so some stories are a mystery apparently even to this day um which is somewhat, somewhat fitting for lovecraft in a way so um let's see here all right so this last story here and i wanted to end with this story I, in fact i talked about it with some friends online the other day uh, in discord so um this last story the title is uh the cats of althar i think is maybe how you say it so this is a short story and um let's see here we gotta find where it starts okay so 
this um this story again has an unnamed narrator uh who's talking who's basically laying out the story and um he's looking at his pet cat in this story and starts to um just remember the time when a law was passed in this town that um and this law forbids the killing of cats and so this narrator talks about how that law was um or why that law was made and so there is this um this couple older couple who apparently um they they are known in the area for trapping and killing any cats that go into their property and the people of the town are too afraid of this couple to to um really say anything to them about it because these uh killings are just really violent and um so they what they try to do what the people in this town try to do instead is just make sure their cats never go to that property which in and of itself is kind of funny because if you ever had a cat if you ever known a cat it's pretty hard to um to get them to not do something if they want to do it they're gonna try like heck to find a way to do it so um but one night there's this caravan of travelers that pass through the town and um there's a, a orphan boy that's riding with them who has a cat and while they're in this town the um this boy's cat escapes the caravan and um this cat is basically all this boy has other than the caravan the people in the caravan and um and before they um and so this this boy's cat is missing and they're unable to find the 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 cat and this boy hears stories of this couple and um it's basically from here excuse me um this boy decides to uh, meditate and say a prayer that um, affects the shapes and movements of the clouds in the sky, which is pretty neat in a way. And and then the caravan leaves that night. And um, and around the same time, all the people in the town that have cats notice that they're that the cats are missing. So the people in town <clears throat> start to suspect both the older couple and also the wanderers. But um the there's a local inn that is in the area and the um someone that basically the innkeeper's son sees uh all the cats from the town circling the property of this this older couple. And the next morning the cats have returned to their owners and um and they appear to have been well fed they appear that like they're they're basically full um and uh and when they of course so when the cats come back home to everyone's to all their homes they don't eat for almost a day i believe it was and not long after that the people in the town re realize we haven't seen that older couple in a while. And so eventually, they go investigate the house where this older couple is at. And all they find of the couple are their skeletons because they've been, um, as the summary in this, in this file says, they've been picked clean. And, and so it's basically, I believe that through this um, boy's meditation and prayers and possibly maybe even i wonder if it's some kind of communication with the cats i don't know but um they uh they were the cats were there to um take revenge on the the couple and um and of course the people in this town are not too um not too sad about this in a way because they've all been dealing with this this older couple and so they decide to pass a law um 
to keep this from happening again or anything similar. And um, that bans that that um, makes it illegal to kill any cats in this town. So I I had to end with that because I just love that story. Um, it was just it was so well done. I mean, it wasn't too graphic. Um, it was, but it was just really well done. I definitely recommend reading that one because it just it's so good. Of course, I'm partial because I love cats. But still, it was really well done. Obviously, you know, I don't ever like the idea of anyone being killed. But um, as I was saying the other night in a voice chat, I can't really blame the cats for um, for that, for their actions there. So, um, and of course, it's a story. So there's that too. But um, and so yeah, that's that's uh that's all I had for tonight, and it looks like that was plenty. So, um, thank you all for listening and for being here as always. Whether you listen to the uh, the live stream or the um, podcast or YouTube feeds, and um, I'll be back tomorrow night with uh, paranormal news. So um, until then, thank you all for listening to South Pseudo Paranormal. Have a good night, everyone.